for me, I've found that Firebase is probably one of the best and quickest ways to get an app up and going with React Native Expo that's going to run cross-platform. So basically, it's like almost super easy at this point because everything's laid out. So here, I'm going to log on to the web version of the app. And then after this, I'm going to log on to iOS. So basically, this is running the same code base as you know, which is something which is very easy with uh, React Native or Expo. And then I'm going to log on to the an Android version of the, of the app. So all these apps are using the same code base and there's no special configuration done. So this, this is how the app set work is set up. Currently, I'm using uh, Expo Router and I have a Firebase folder which has like a the configuration but then it's using Expo um, so inside the Firebase folder inside the source I have a Firebase folder and this Firebase folder holds the logic of most of the log of most of the functionality which I will need from Firebase and you'll see there that I have platform did OS web so, so that will cover the web version of things. And then I also, have, I'll show you in the description as well, I mean the package JSON, that I, you'll see that the, I have the native Firebase installed as well. So that will handle the native bits. So both web and iOS are covered in the setup. So let, let me say that both web and mobile are covered in the setup. One of the other things that you will notice here is when you look at the package.json is that like I, I like I have um, React Native Firebase installed but then also at the same time like I have the Firebase auth which is for the web so I had to do Firebase init to create the, the other web version and then Firebase, Native Firebase, I installed via the RN uh, FB library, which is the React Native Firebase uh, library. So they both work hand in hand. So unfortunately, at the moment, a React Native Firebase doesn't handle web like in, a, in the best way possible. So I'll show you here what are some of the other functionality which are covered by React Native Firebase and what like you see like when it comes to auth you got that orange mean that it's partial support meaning that you can still use React Native Firebase for web but then the support is not that it's not that it's not that great so what I chose to do is to actually just use the web version of Firebase that works so so well so so what also happens is that like if you use the web version of Firebase you can actually get other additional functionality which will make it super easy to use uh, auth with Firebase. Uh, if you go to the web version of, of, of Firebase, you, you'll see that like uh, on the docs, you'll see that there. So re so what happens here is that like the package, they're all using auth, but then now when it comes to auth, you have to decide whether do you want to use auth for web or do you want to use auth for mobile? So I've got functionality there to actually then export whichever auth that you need based on the platform that you have. So I'll show you how it's getting used inside the app itself. So inside the app, you'll see that like I'm, I'm just importing the auth and slash web auth. And then I'll check the platform first. And then after I check the platform, you'll see that I also like on, on sign up. I'll, I'll I'll check that I'll I'll first try to check the platform and see if web auth is is exists like does it exist and then if it doesn't exist then and you, the platform is mobile then rather go and do the auth with mobile. This is similar logic when it when it comes to signing in as well, whereby you have to first check which platform are you using. This logic can be done on that Firebase folder uh, file, but in this case, I just chose it to put it there. 
So it's it's all on your choice, but you have to have that on on auth state changed, uh, because that that's what keeps track of the of the auth, um, and they will also ensure that like the auth is initialized, and also uh, you just have to unsubscribe uh, to get to, so you don't get like, some side effects for that. Uh, but you can see that it, this is similar logic to, that, that we did uh, initially. We were also doing it here, and we are using that web auth. So one well, well, one of the things which I like about this setup is that like it works so well with Expo Router. So you can almost have your your group, your auth group, or you can decide to have like which, whichever way you want to do your routing. Uh, you can use it based on that auth and you can also use different segments. For example, we have a segment for auth. If you are not, if you are logging into the app and you're not, you haven't authorized, it'll, it'll go to that auth segment. Um, because we are using React Native, we have that Google Services JSON in the Google, uh, the info p list. Um, that, that is useful for, for, react native to work for the mobile bits i have a another video whereby i show you how you can git ignore those files uh, it's a special setup that i have i'll also put a link in description as well for you to see how you can prevent those files going to git and also you can still build your app or submit it to uh to expo so yeah basically that's that's pretty much it uh, for this uh video